Welcome to Quality Digest Presents. I'm Dirk Ducharm, Editor-in-Chief for Quality Digest. And uh, once again, uh, we're at the Evident Showroom in San Jose, California. And with me is uh, Rob Bellinger. And uh, Rob is going to take us through, um, what, a new software from, uh, or, or a new update to software from, yeah. from Evident, right? Very correct, yeah. Okay. So we've, we've shown off our digital microscope before, our DSX-1000. But what we have now is a new software interface called Pressive for DSX. Our Pressive software brings in our advanced analytical software package that we've been using for quite a while on our other compound and stereo microscopes and our semiconductor microscopes to operate those systems. We've now interfaced it with our digital microscope to have a uniform platform across all of our different microscope systems and add some more capabilities that I'm excited to show today, some more advanced functions that we just didn't have in the old software control. So, 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 the, so the goal eventually is that all of evidence microscopes are going to run under Pressive. I mean, that's the, that's the long-term the long goal, That's right? the long-term goal, okay. and we're taking the big step now in our flagship ship system here, our DSX digital microscope, by placing Pressive for DSX. So okay. let me show you some of the great features. Um, to begin with, we still have the console system in full control of all the functions through the console. So this is still very nice and interactive. And you'll see me using it quite a bit. But the software layout has the new look and feel, that dark interface with the workflow through the center. You'll start an observation, do advanced acquisitions, working your way down to annotate the image. And all of your measurement tools are in here too. A lot of new measurement tools that I'll talk about and 3D measurements since we have a lot of great 3D capabilities on our digital microscope and reporting at the end. So okay. to start, we have kind of a low mag image and I like to show off some of the power in the automation for the motorized stage with the digital microscope. So under acquisition, we have our panorama mode. On the left side here, it shows kind of a map image. This white area is just our entire stage travel right okay. now. So you can click around anywhere you want to move on the stage, but we don't see anything yet. We can acquire, though, a tornado scan, which I think is a cool term. Just does a quick rounding scan area. Starting from the yeah. center. Like and so it like wants that. us to go, the digital microscope can use all the way down to the 1x objective. So it's saying it, we can change out to the 1x, or we could use what I have here is the 3x. But I can continue going with this 3x that I have on here now just by selecting no. And I can even swap this view over into my main window okay. so I can kind of see it as it works. So it's so just going, it, tornado because it's tornado just kind of going circle. in a circle around yeah. the center. Okay. So I gotcha. just let it go as long as I want. If I want to, I could let it go over the whole stage area. But I have a smaller chip on the sample, uh, on the surface of the stage now. So my sample isn't as big as the stage. So I'll let it continue across the top here. And there's a stop button at the top here for stopping your map acquisition. So I can stop it at this point. And then I can navigate on the stage anywhere I want. If I want to go back to this location here, I just click and it'll move back. And I can swap this image back and see my live image again. So this is exactly where I'm at on this map image over here. So it's interactive. Along with the map image, you can set up your stitching very easily from here. Rather than the operator having to use the joystick and driving to a top left corner and bottom right, right corner, right. which can still prompt them to do with this selection here, right, to find it by a stage. But since we have the map image, we can just draw right on the map image. And we can say we want a okay. rectangular, circular, well, what's really great is a polygonal area. If you have something that is a weird shape, you can actually okay. trace around it, and it'll only capture the images over that area. So saving time. Saving a uh, lot of time, okay. blocking out. If you need to stitch a donut or something. Right, right, right. But we can do a rectangle stitch real quick and define, maybe I want to do the whole top left corner of this. So I can define it right here just by drawing it. Let me bring this over so you see it again a little bigger. Okay. It defines the fields of view it needs for the area that I selected, and the operator just has to hit start and it's gonna go through and capture a quick 2D stitched image for okay. us. With this low mag 3X, it has a lot of depth of focus anyway, so stitch is a high resolution, high quality stitch here now. You don't see any pattern misalignment right, right. or anything. It does a really uh, pattern uh, shift alignments with the overlay between okay. the frames and everything. The software takes care of all that for you. So this is our 2D image stitched together, still completely measurable on. Um, beyond that, you can even set up to do a 3D stitch. And if you wanted all the three-dimensional data on here as well, by doing panorama and 3D. Okay. 
Um, we've already set up our top and bottom range here, but the user would just have to turn the live on and make sure they're set in their top and bottom range. Of the, focus. the top and top of the, the, focus, the Z range. Yeah, so, yeah okay, and yeah. bottom of focus. Okay. But that's all they have to do. They'd hit start. It's going to move to the first frame, and the Z will automatically capture. So as the system is moving, it now captured that frame with all of the Z focus points. Okay. That now you could needed. you could do this with a with a um, higher power objective, but it would just it might take longer for the depending on the field of depending view you're trying to capture. Amount you're stitching uh, together. Okay, yeah. Gotcha. So I'll show that afterwards. We'll zoom in on a higher mag area, but I wanted to show the stitching with 3D. Okay. And it takes a few seconds to roll through this, but the user can switch to 3D view here. And oh, okay. ah, cool. we okay. can close some of these windows down by airing it over, maximize our field of view, but you see all the height data was captured right, in right. this as well. Now this was low mag, low resolution, so what an operator might want to do is come back to their observation, start their live image again, and go to a specific area of interest uh, by looking at their map image again if they want. They could zoom in and say, we want to look right here, something with some interest. Okay. And they can change mag by sliding to the higher mag objective. And the higher, we also have optical zoom, so if we want to magnify in further, we can focus on the console here. We can select the area that we want to mag to. We can click to center. We can even use the focus wheel on the mouse to change focus as well. Okay. It's a lot of unique yeah, yeah. tools, <laughs> quick okay. and easy to yeah. access. Once the operator is here and they want to capture this higher resolution 3D image, they can just hit 3D acquisition on the console, okay. or they can go back to the acquisition in the software and select 3D and capture it. So it's quick on the console, though, to zip through, capture all that height information from the lowest point of focus to the highest point, and everything shows in focus at the end. All right. And they can render that 3D image. Oh, and there it is. Okay. Yeah. And we have a second monitor, which is nice. We could drag our live image to the second monitor. You could drag the captured images over to the second monitor. But I know you guys aren't capturing both monitors. So on a single monitor, you can hit the full screen button on the console and render okay. this 3D image in the full screen. That you can have your live cool. image in the full <coughs> screen as well. All right. But yeah, all the height data is there. And we can even show things by right clicking on it show some of the settings in here. Maybe we want to see just the source layer. This is the raw height information plotted as it's scanned through by contrast. And we can blend lookup tables, show high and low points by color. And I can even enable some shading to really see the texture. Right, that's nice. There's a lot of information that can yeah, be yeah. determined from here. So this image, rotate, zoom in to exactly where you want it. You can save this picture. You can also create an animation. It can render a 3D rotation and save out as a video file to put in a really cool presence. So as so you would, you create an animation, then and then as you're moving it it'll and rotating, it's recording it. Record. Okay, got yeah, it. So okay. as I create, it'll save out as an AVI file, and okay. maybe I want to do that real quick. Oh, was it named Test also? <laughs> test two. Save. So it'll render and rotate uh, around. Oh, okay. And I capture see what all those okay. frames in a video file for us all now. Right. What a great thing to throw in a PowerPoint presentation, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, really <laughs> nice. So it'll rotate around and capture that information and create the entire video compressed together. <clears throat> and then you can just drop that into a, uh, into a report. Yes. Okay. So now we have our video file out here, and it was okay. saved out to the, uh, and you can drop it into your report, which goes out to PowerPoint, Excel, or Word. Okay. And now that we have this three-dimensional information and all the height data, the operators might want to do those 3D type measurements. So we can still plot line profiles anywhere we want over the surface. And you down here okay. see the plotted line profile data. And we can come in here and do profile measurements. We can measure from high to low points. We could also measure from you know, an edge to an edge to get a width between these two points based on the profile. Okay. But if I click down here, I can get this height information, minus okay. a little over half of a millimeter, 567 microns. All right, all right, that's cool. This information can be sent out to Excel really easily, or if you save the image with the save buttons down here in the bottom right, 
it would save the image as a JPEG. It'll merge the measurement data to the image. And JPEG images save with the calibration data as well. Okay. Um, or you can send this all out to a report at this point. And we have a bunch of custom report templates for Word and Excel that have the image and the measurements. You can render the 3D image in the report templates and stuff like that. Or send it out to a printer if you still had a printer. Right. So and you, you have a variety of 2D measurements, I'm assuming, there, too. Yeah, so the full analytical power oh, sure. of okay. Pressive, along with all the normal compound microscopes that don't do so much 3D, we have all of the 2D measurement tools now. So right. all of this is brought into Pressive, where you can do arbitrary line measurements, area measurements of circles and polygons. You also have the ability to do edge detection. So if I was to measure an arbitrary line across you know, the opening here, it's doing edge detection to mark the edges here uh, for okay. me based on the contrast of that edge, the dark okay. edges there. So I can measure a distance just as quick as that. Wow. Again, all these measurements along with the 3D measurements can go to Excel or to your report templates or to text files. Okay. You can also do linked objects. So we can create auxiliary points of a, where two lines cross and measure from that auxiliary point gotcha. to a different measurement point by yeah. doing linked objects, maybe from a center of a circle. Right, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. So generated features or generated points and, and link. And, and then uh, link to them, them or link two measurements to each other with the linked objects okay. tools. So that's all in the DSX, Pressive for DSX software okay. that we just didn't have in the old software. We didn't have all these advanced uh, measurement tools. Right. Speaking of advanced measurement tools, we also brought in all of our material solutions that we use on our other microscopes since it's Pressive software, we have those material solutions here. Things like grains analysis and inclusions and um, cast iron analysis, uh, particle detection, particle distribution. These are all piecemeal. Customers okay. aren't going to need all of these. This is my demo unit, so it shows them all. But if the customer is doing a lot of particle distribution, maybe they want that and porosity measurement. Or some customers are like, we do inclusions and grains. They just have those right. two. Now, you have mentioned that um, Pressive is, is, is eventually is going to incorporate all the various, uh, or, or, or work with all the various instruments that, that uh, Evident makes. Yes. If that particular instrument, let's say like a regular microscope or something like that, um, doesn't have like a, you know, uh, some, uh, doesn't have the capability to do some of these operations, Will they just be grayed out or not appear on the menu how, uh, to avoid confusing the user, that sort of thing? Sure, yeah, that's a great question. So Pressive can go on a standard basic stereo microscope that has manual focus, no motorization, no 3D capability. So 3D just wouldn't be an option here. Okay, so, so, the, so the, the operator's not going to see something unnecessary for them. Correct, okay. it won't show up if that capability isn't there. Like in acquisition, if they don't have the motorized stage, they won't have the automatic functionalities sure. here. Okay. It'll just be great. gone. Okay. Um, they might have some functionalities like instant extended focal imaging where they manually roll through the focus on oh, the okay. manual okay. system and it would okay. capture all the focus data. Okay. That's possible on a standard oh, microscope okay. as nice. well. Okay. But all of the measurement tools, the basic 2D measurements will all be there. It's just the 3D may not be if they don't have a way to capture 3D yeah. height data right. Right. like our digital microscope can. So. Last thing I wanted to show was uh, just kind of a neater look and the ability of how the software interfaces when you have to go from high mag that we're working on here to the capability of running your low mag. So the digital microscope's great because it has low mag to high mag all built in, kind of like stereo microscope range to high res, even really high mag compound microscope okay. range just by swapping out the optics. So all the operator has to do is pull the high mag optics out and the system's going to prompt them to choose what they're switching to and we're switching to the super long working distance objective. Okay. They hit OK and it's going to move to that focus position for them to where they can just slide in this and be at focus on that sample. Okay. So you'll see when we slide in the 1x, oh, see I grabbed it again, I grabbed the 10x, I want the 1x. <laughs> the lowest mag, 1x. We'll slide that in, and it's coded, so the software knows we're now on the 1x. Oh, uh, okay. And it corrects all of the lighting for that, and we can be in mixed mode, and 
when we start our live, it's going to be at this right focus point for the sample we were looking okay. at. Um, one of the things that we can do is switch out to much larger samples that you wouldn't use in the high mag, something like this lava rock. It's kind of neat to look at. If I put this under here, we can change quickly change the stage focus down to be at the same focus point. Now, what, 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 about, what about lighting modes and, and that sort of stuff? Correct. So all of our optics, so since Evidence and Optics Company, first and foremost, they design specific optics for the digital microscope. They're all labeled DSX. Okay. These optics all allow for all of the observation methods in one platform. So we can do bright field and dark field on okay. all the optics. We can do mixed illumination. We can do Nomarski DIC, okay. true optical Nomarski DIC on all the optics choices. We can still even run the standard compound optics. So if you need something like Apo corrected lenses, we can still put those on the okay. slides and run them on the digital microscope as okay. well. But you're right, we still have bright field, we can do oblique lighting, mixed lighting, dark field, all on this 1x objective. So you see large fields of view, and we can still zoom in and select an area that we want, center up on it. We have a lot of topography here, we can still capture 3D acquisition with a button push, and capture everything in focus. Oh wow, that's cool. <laughs> it looks like the looks like the surface of the moon there. Yeah, a lot of texture on this material, and we can do those neat surface colorings, blend lookup tables, see okay. heights, enable some shadowing, see the source layer. A lot of information can be captured. For uh, so th the capability also then with the software is work with everything from super high magnification lenses to like what we got here, a 1X lens, yeah. right? A lot of customers will go very low mag, especially for capturing overview images or putting larger components on, right. metal components, circuit boards, but then they have the need to look at fine surface detail, so they'll go up in a higher mag range. What's great about the DSX specific objectives is we can get to a very high resolution lens, but they modified specifically designed these objectives to have a lot more working distance than the standard compound microscope has. Okay. The digital microscope gives you that capability of extra working distances, but still high mag range and high resolution. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. And, um, you know, the only other thing, did I, the only other thing I think I missed was the best imaging function. So oh, okay. if an operator does walk up and... They're not sure what, what lighting yeah, to they, use. Yeah, they put a new sample on and they don't know what lighting to use, you know, and they bring it into quick focus. And maybe they're just in bright field observation. And when they first look at it, they don't see as much detail as they'd want, right? They can quickly go to a best image mode. Rather than switching through each one manually, the system can do best image and show them some overview tiles of those okay. images so it's, at it's, different modes. It's changing the lighting modes and just tie, putting it all on one screen so you can take a quick look and see which one maybe. That's right. It's all done in the okay. head of the unit. Okay. So everything's motorized, all the observation methods, it puts it in and out, changes the series, and modifies it for the operator without them having to push sliders, having to pull levers, anything like that. So they can come in here and see a thumbnail of all the different image settings. Okay. And we have even DIC on this lens but maybe they look at the mixed lighting. Dark field doesn't give a lot of the background information. Right. Bright field has the contrast, but mixed lighting gives both. Okay. Back and so dark field and bright field mixed together, we get both the background data and the contrast. All they have to do is hit apply and it sets the microscope up into that mode. Sets okay. all of the parameters in the head and shows them the live image with that mode. Okay. And they're ready to move on and capture right. their 3D images or stitching and anything else. And what currently, what instruments or, or a, a series of instruments are supported by Pressif right now? A pretty large range of our s microscopes are. So we have Pressif for DSX, the digital microscope now. Our semiconductor microscope, the MX, runs on Pressif. Our upright compound microscope, the BX53. The stereo microscopes, the entire range of stereo microscopes can have the digital cameras and Pressive software running with them as well. Um, we even put our Pressive software on to our measuring microscope 
and it has the capability of using all the 2D measurements on the measuring microscope as well. Now, if if they're running if they're running an older uh, an, an older version of software, not Pressive, can they can they upgrade to the, to Pressive? Great question. Yeah, we do have migration paths right now, okay. going from our old software platform, which was called Stream, okay. on a lot of the other microscopes. And they have migration paths and migration pricing. They don't have to buy it outright. Okay. They already own an old license. They migrate to Pressive. Okay. And Pressive is going to uh, is running on Windows 11, and it's compatible with the latest Office version and stuff. And it's the one that'll keep going forward. Okay. If Windows 12 comes out, who knows? All right. <laughs> Pretty impressive. That's great. Thank okay. You. Well, Rob, thanks. Appreciate yeah. it, man. Thanks again. Okay. Nice seeing you. Yeah.